All right, welcome back. So now the last part of this section is looking at the factor theorem, which is a kind of a spin-off of the remainder theorem, and we'll see why. So the factor theorem says that a polynomial f of x has a factor x minus k if and only if f of k is equal to zero. Now remember from the previous theorem, that remainder theorem, that said that f of k is equal to r. So remember when we plugged in for synthetic division and whatever we got for a remainder, that was the function value. Well, so when that function value is zero, then that also means that the remainder is zero. So it's kind of a, a nice thing to check when you're looking for zeros. Is this number a zero or not? We can now just plug that into synthetic division and see if we get a zero remainder. If we get a zero remainder, then it's a factor. So it's a really, really nice theorem. So let's test it out. So we got a value of four, and we wanna see if that's a zero for this polynomial function. So let's quickly plug it in and see what we get. So again, just make sure all the powers of x are in there, and then write down all those coefficients. And now just go. So a lot of multiplying and adding, remember. So what's your conclusion? So you can see what I'm writing here, hopefully. So since r is equal to two based on that last number and not zero, then four is not a zero of p of x. Now again, you don't have to get too crazy with you know writing a proper sentence or, or whatnot, but just so that way you're clear of what this means for us. So what about this one? So we got the square root of six and we have this polynomial. So put that on the outside and now be careful. We have x to the six and then x to the fourth. So we're missing x to the fifth. So we need to keep track of that, remember, by using a zero. And we're missing x cubed. Again, let's keep track of it with a zero. We're missing x, so we need another zero. A lot of zeros here. But let's see what happens. So bring down our negative two. So negative two times the square root of six is negative two square root of six. Add that, and we get a negative two square root of six. Now we gotta multiply again. So the two square roots of six will combine to make a six times the negative two, which is negative 12. So that's a negative 17 times the square root of six, negative 17 square root of six. Multiply again. So now we got negative 17 times, uh, times six. So what's that equal to? Okay, four, uh, 102 looks like. So a negative 102, so negative 105. Multiply again, negative 105 square root of 6. Running out of space, but might be able to squeeze it all in. So 6, excuse me, square root of 6, and the square root of 6 is another 6. So 6 times 105 is what? Well, 6 times 105, so we got a okay, 3... Uh, so 230, well, I better just make sure I'm doing it right because my brain's not working very well. Let's take a look here. So 105 times 6 is 630. Oh boy. And it's negative. Boy, that seems awfully large. Maybe I multiplied wrong earlier. Nope. 
Hmm. Oh, I see where I made a problem right here. So I have to fix this. This is not 17. And all of this is wrong. Don't you hate it when you make a mistake? But it happens to the best of us. So this would be a negative 7, not negative 17. So negative 7 squared is 6. And 6 times 7 is 42 negative. So negative 45. And then I think that might be a negative 270, which is zero. So amazing what one little addition, incorrect addition, will do to you. So you really want to be careful, especially when you have these long polynomials that you have to break down. So, so we can see that um, x equal to the square root of 6 is a zero of of x so all right let's try one more a little different problem and that will wrap up this video and wrap up this section so determine whether the given binomial is a factor of the polynomial following it if it is a factor then factor the polynomial completely so this one's a two-phase problem. So we first got to see if it's a factor or not. And if it is, then we got to break it down all the way. So remember, the easiest way when we have a factor of this type is to use synthetic division. Now remember, this is in the form x minus k. So in this case, k would be a positive 4. So make sure you use the right sign on those values of k. So let's get that down and let's multiply and add. So let's say we have 15, 60, and lo and behold, we get a zero. So, <coughs> so we can then conclude that x minus 4 is a factor. So now if it is a factor, factor the polynomial completely. So we started off with x cubed plus 4x squared minus 17x minus 60. And we concluded that this was a factor, so we can now write it as x minus 4 times what? Well, remember, we have this these values down here, which gives us information about what's left after you factor. So we know we have an x squared, we have an 8x, and we got a 15. And so now what would we do to factor this the rest of the way? Well, we do have a quadratic. We should be able to break that down. It's actually a nice quadratic. So let's see, we got to go x and x. Now the last sign is plus, and this, so that means they're the same, and the sign in the middle is plus, so that means they're both pluses. Okay, so we need two factors of 15 that add to 8. Hmm, I think you probably already know. It's got to be 3 and 5, right? Those ones add to 8, and they multiply to 15, so we're good. So that should be the fully factored polynomial. All right, so that wraps up this section. So we'll start getting into 2.4 in the next video. See you very soon.